Cloud City's always looking for new talent. You think you have what it takes? You know how to fly. 190 years old? Oh. You look great! E. Greetings guys and welcome to a new episode of Fizzle's Film Reviews and today I'm going to be tackling the new Star Wars movie, So Lame a Star Snores Boring. Yeah, I know, I know, it's a very funny pun. Um, but anyways, I've already done an IMDB review of it. And I actually hadn't realized there's a character limit in IMDb reviews, and I used it, and I was actually upset because I wanted to tear the movie apart more. So I guess I'll, I'll be doing that in today's video, because there's definitely a lot more to talk about that I didn't really touch in that video. Um, so, yeah, Star Wars has honestly been kind of lame since Return of the Jedi. Like, the first movie's great for the characters, obviously. It, the whole first trilogy is great just for the strong characters. But since then, we've had very weak characters. Like, that was a big problem with the prequels, having very bland characters like Qui-Gon Jinn. Obi-Wan Kenobi was really kind of toned down with the, the whole Jedi thing. You didn't have your Luke Skywalker, your Han Solo. I mean, Anakin was kind of trying to fill that role but it felt really contrived in those movies. And then you get to the new Star Wars movies, which feel kind of like a joke. And at first, with Episode 7, I didn't really mind it that much. I was like, okay, this is kind of trying to recapture the, the old feelings of like the original trilogy, uh, but it's really derivative. It doesn't really have anything new to bring to the table. Um, Rogue One felt like it was trying hard to be different, but it felt really, really poorly executed, really, like, flimsy. And other people have done, like, many hour-long, like, rants about why these uh, films are, are bad, essentially. Um, and then Last Jedi came out, and I was like, this is a visually stunning movie, but it doesn't make any sense, and it's just plugged to the brim with really stupid stuff and I didn't even do a review of that I was gonna do a review of that where I like tore it apart but didn't get around to it but then Solo came out and I, I told myself I, I have a bad feeling about this like right when I heard that they announced this film because why do we need a Han Solo movie now it's so beyond relevance and it's so pointless. It's going to be a really harmless film. It's another prequel. I thought they'd learned their lesson with the prequels and the, the past like few movies where they've avoided any existence of the, the prequels. Like it, it's it almost fell out of canon in that time. But here's the only spoiler of the whole movie, by the way. There's a Darth Maul cameo. Yeah, Darth Maul makes an appearance in this film. And it's so bizarre. Um, it does take place after the prequels. So it's. I think it's actually bringing back the the uh, expanded universe a bit and like the story from the Clone Wars where he's got a robotic lower body after being cut in half by Obi-Wan Kenobi and here's my theory I know I haven't talked about Solo very much but here's my theory is that they're gonna shoehorn in Darth Maul into the upcoming Obi-Wan Kenobi movie with Ewan McGregor and they're gonna have an epic uh, rematch you know, with his arch rival Darth Maul, who appeared for like 15 minutes of episode one before getting presumably killed off, but apparently not. Um, there's actually not much else of interest, obviously enough, throughout the movie. My 
huge gripe with it is that it's so boring. Whereas like the other Star Wars movies had bad writing. They at least had dumb, interesting action to back them up. I mean, aside from Attack of the Clones, which was just a mess, aside from maybe the scene where, where Obi-Wan fights um, Jango Fett, but the rest of that movie is bland. I think this movie um, is the second worst Star Wars film, only, only beaten by Attack of the Clones, really. And it's it should kind of go without saying that, like, this is a really dull concept. Like, I don't know why they thought this was a good idea. They've already ruined most of the characters. They've already scared away their old audience, essentially, with The Last Jedi, especially. But I guess this sort of happens when you hire completely different directors to direct all your movies. They kind of clash with each other. And, you know, they got rid of the the old movie going audience. So, like, the sales were garbage here. And they were, like, whining on Twitter, like, Oh, hey, it doesn't matter. The trolls aren't going to affect our movie. And then, oh, what do you know? It's a big flop. You guys lost a ton of money off of this one. And you guys considered the the previous one to be a massive failure, even though it made over a billion dollars. You're spending too much money if that's a failure. Um, at Star Wars, you don't really need to spend that much money. I mean, George Lucas said it himself, but I guess you guys don't have a story so you're you're trying to subsidize it with uh, flashy visuals, and this movie didn't really have that. Like, um, I I kind of like it that it's trying to be a bit different, um, but it's not done well all the same. And since it's not done well, it has even less to offer than even the worst Star Wars movies prior to this. Um, and for that reason, it, it has to be, like, right near the bottom. So, it, it's no secret. There was a lot of reshoots. I think 70% of this movie was reshot. The uh, director originally was... Um, oh, I, I don't know names very well. But he, he did 21 Jump Street, I believe. And a, a few other interesting movies that I actually liked. Um, I guess his vision was a little too risky. It was a little too different for their taste. So they just fired him and replaced him with um, Ron Howard, who used to be known for good movies. But nowadays he just like has the most generic trite out. He hasn't made a good movie in many years now. They, they clearly they clearly wanted something really bland that took no risks and that's definitely not the way to go with solo because it's you're just telling a story that we've already heard that was already determined to be not interesting enough to show on screen we've we we've already had the most interesting bits the episode four five and six. Like, that story's all been told. Now you're going back and doing a prequel, doing an origin story of Han Solo, a character <laughs> who no one cares about anymore because, like, he's been ruined at this point. The whole original... Star Wars has been tarnished at this point beyond repair, in my opinion. It's just not good and people have been it's been like what 35 years since the last good star wars movie like how do you expect people stick around that long when you're producing trite all this time so and <laughs> and, and harrison ford had a good point like that he wanted to kill off Han Solo after the first movie because Han Solo's character arc was, arc was complete. The hero story had been finished for him. He offered very little beyond that point. I mean, he's a fan favorite and he's a fine character and Harrison Ford is a great actor. Or at least he was back then. Now he's a bit old. You know, I can't hold that against him. You know, people get old and it's kind of hard to be, you know, the, the same person when you're... You, when you're struggling walking around even but um 
those are some pretty big shoes to fill. And Alden Ein, Ehrenreich, I can't pronounce that name, sorry. Um, I, I thought he did a pretty bad job. Like, he he just came off as arrogant, really. He, he came off as an arrogant jerk. He didn't have that charm that the original Han Solo had. Um, he didn't have the talent that Harrison Ford had. And yes, he needed an acting coach. And I think he was even bashing this movie, like after filming it uh, after being filmed rather so that was a bad sign as well <laughs> but the the original han solo was smug but charismatic whereas this one is just kind of foolish he's kind of a bit dim-witted but he's really really arrogant he doesn't come off as a confident and sort of um, intriguing character the way the original did and his voice is way too different like people do voice impersonations and he doesn't even attempt it he just does his regular talking voice so he just he doesn't fit the role whatsoever he's just a guy pretending to be Han Solo he's just cosplaying as Han Solo essentially in fact that's insulting a cosplayer so they could have probably did a better job um Chewbacca was probably the best thing about this film, but that's kind of damning with faint praise. Because, like, how do you mess up Chewbacca? He's such a simple character, but he's so much fun. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to quote Quentin Tarantino there. Uh, the, like, paraphrase, rather. But Chewbacca's a lot of fun. His scenes are handled pretty well. His character's handled well. Um, he offers the best co comedic relief throughout the film. In fact, like, I, th I think his physical comedy is the only thing that lands throughout the film whatsoever. The rest of it's just one-liners tossed in that don't really make much sense. Um... But yeah, Chewbacca is a lot of fun. They even have a bit of interaction when they first meet. And it's like, okay, you did something a bit interesting, even if it's a bit contrived. I mean, the original trilogy was a bit contrived at times, it has to be said. So I'm not going to hold it against it. Like, it's kind of trying to go for that classic vibe, but it's just too bland. It's like you took the original, like formula you pulled out lightsabers you you removed the force and find like the force is a bit of a plot convenience type thing i'm not a big fan of the force honestly i think it was like the weakest element of like star wars up to this point um but there's like no fighting there's very little risk they introduce a bunch of new characters and they're treated like those Star Trek red shirt guys. They're so expendable. And they almost have to be because they don't appear in the old movies. So they're either like completely irrelevant at that point or they're dead. And it's kind of silly how quickly the movie like kills off a lot of them um, and how quickly uh, like Han's buddy it, it, throughout the film gets over the death of his wife essentially it, it, it it's bizarre it's kind of jarring the pacing of this film because you start off with a little fun sort of action sequence like and then you get a, a little bit of uh, uh, of character development I guess where Han Solo they they reveal how Han Solo got his solo name because he didn't have a family. So the Imperial Guard was just like, oh, Han Solo, which reminds me of that terrible uh, parody series of Star Wars on, on YouTube where they call him Han Singular. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, unintentionally funny there, I guess, unless they were just trying to be funny. In which it didn't seem like it, because it seemed like they were trying to be a bit serious with that. I don't know. It it was trying to be quirky, but it just wasn't quirky. It just came off as dumb throughout the whole movie. Oh, man. Um, so, then there's a sequence of, like, generic war stuff, which was like, okay, I guess. It it kind of shook the... the it kind of rattled the movie a little bit, kind of 
gave it a little bit of variety to it, but it like again was very very safe. It it was no Saving Private Ryan, that's for sure. Uh, given the the PG thirteen rating, of course. Um, <laughs> but even then, like episode seven was a lot more brutal with its like war type imagery and stuff. But um, yeah, then there's the the most in like in depth action sequence in the film where they're trying to do a heist of this valuable material called Crystarium or something. I don't remember. I I only remember the basic plot of the film. I don't remember what the, the MacGuffin was. Um, but that sequence is actually quite entertaining. Um, it was really the highlight of the film. And then the rest of it goes downhill and it, it turns into just expositional dialogue for like the next hour. And it's bizarre because they, they have the fun bits at the start and there's a whole lot of nothing. And then they have a bit of action towards the end that pales in comparison to the opening scene, like the, the second action sequence in the, the movie. And it's... <sighs> It's dumb. It's really dumb. And even that alien character they introduced in that action sequence, he had like this generic cartoony voice that I don't feel matched his looks whatsoever. It like it was worse than generic video game voice acting from like the early 90s. Um <laughs> And they they didn't utilize their source material very well either. And the characters that came back were like kind of kind of contrived. Um, Lando obviously makes an appearance. I I can understand that bringing back Lando that makes sense because um, he he was a big part of Empire Strikes Back, but he does nothing in the film. He's just there for his ship. They just use him for his ship, and they have a couple of scenes where where Han's gambling with him. Uh, where Lando's like cheeky and he's cheating and Han catches him and kind of turns it against him to I guess win the Millennium Falcon from him by the end but it's just it's really dull um Lando's just kind of like he, he's there for the ride and taking a back seat and that's kind of a disappointing waste of that character because they're so chummy in Empire Strikes Back and this doesn't explain how they got to be such close friends you know um jeez <sighs> this film did not to be this film did not need to be 135 minutes it's it's worse than Rogue One, and that's kind of making the whole a Star Wars story tagline um, be synonymous with a completely pointless spin-off, because uh, it adds nothing to the source, like, material adds nothing to the universe. It just introduces new characters that are there to die and tells a story that's already been told before in just a different way from a different aspect that's not all that interesting. Um, they also had a love interest, which doesn't really work since it's a prequel. You already know it doesn't work out, given that she's not a character in like the, the main series. And if, it's just dumb. It's so dumb. And... <laughs> And there's no style. There's no vision in this film. They sucked everything interesting out of it. And it it falls back on the most generic tropes in existence. And at best, it gets mediocre at, at its peak moments in the film. It's just so stupid. <laughs> It's such a low energy film. It's more boring than Blade Runner 2049, but it also lacks the atmosphere. Despite this being the Star Wars universe, like that this is such a huge galaxy. Okay, you have films that are set in a single room that have more depth and more world building to them than this movie that takes place in a galaxy. 
it, it's so bad and the music is terrible like Blade Runner 2049 had an incredible soundtrack that really added to the atmosphere and really really helped shape the mood of that film whereas if it wasn't like if it didn't have the good music I think that film would have fallen apart because it was so dull otherwise Um, And every other Star Wars movie, except for Rogue One, like this actually has a lot of similar problems as Rogue One. Every other Star Wars movie, though, had excellent music. Like every other Star Wars movie had really good music, especially the prequels. I can forgive episode one a lot, largely due to its incredible incredible soundtrack because it does a lot to elevate the mood to add suspense and to add excitement even though the shots aren't interesting even though there's way too much cgi there's way too much going on the epic music really really helps to um to smooth over the the rough bits and this movie the music just kind of kind of was bland and it almost put me asleep really it was the exact opposite an action movie should go for um the humor is also really cringeworthy it's awful it's terrible i i don't think a single joke landed and you could watch the trailer there's a few supposed jokes in there too Honestly, all the jokes are on par with the ones in the trailer, like with Han Solo going like, You're 195? You look great! But, oh, jeez. Um, I guess it wasn't as bad as Last Jedi, because it, it wasn't as jarring, because the movie didn't go as dark as The Last Jedi, which is also damning with faint praise because uh, it didn't have depth to it. It was just trying to play it super safe. Um, but it, it was not funny. There are so many one-liners thrown in and none of them landed. <laughs> um, which leads me in to the most annoying element of the film, whatsoever you know how star wars always has a comedic relief droid um like rogue one actually had one of the funniest with uh k ks 8 i think he was called or ks 2 or something this film has leet like l337 like as in like actually leet like leet speak 1337 where you use like numbers in place of letters um so already dates itself with that or already kind of cringy with the really on the nose meme name sort of thing um and she's hello woke like this is the bottom of the barrel like super pandering sjw social justice warrior leftist propaganda bullshit i love l3 because she is a uh She's a revolutionary, and she's um, a feminist. That's ever been in Star Wars. And apparently this is Kathleen Kennedy getting her grubby fingers into it and just trying to force this really, really radical leftist message like into the Star Wars movies. (laughs) And... This character, this robot character, it's a robot, mind you, is bitching about equal rights throughout the movie, about, like, how her robot brethren are being oppressed, and she also, there's no consequence for her being a dick to, like, every character she comes into contact with. She's, like, super sassy, she's an asshole, she treats everyone like shit, and yet she's acting like she's this empowering female figure. But she's just a bitch. She's just the problem. She's like a basic Tumblrina chick, which is also hilarious and kind of pulls me out of the movie because it's set a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Yet we have 21st century Tumblrina feminazis 
being portrayed in this universe. It's it, it's so dumb. That was never a thing before, but now oh, it's a huge thing. It reminded me actually of uh, the the hilarious independent PC game called Murder by Peter Moorhead, um, in which Jim Sterling tore this game apart. It, like you can beat it in about twenty minutes. It's called Murder. And at the end, you destroy a robot. And basically, it shoves it down your throat that you're a bad person for thinking robots don't have feelings. Which they don't. They're robots. They're literally objects. Okay? Like, I, I get the whole animal rights stuff, right? Like, we shouldn't treat animals like crap just because they're not people. Like, they're still living things, they feel pain, they live, they eat, they breathe. You shouldn't treat them like crap. Robots are tools that we created. Like, where's... If there is some sort of moral to to be, like, argued, it's way too early to be arguing that. Technology's not nearly at that point where robots have any sentience whatsoever. <laughs> They just say hello to you when you ask them a question, at most. (laughs) Um, If they really wanted to push it, they should have gone full American History X. They should have had robots getting curb stomped, getting beaten on the streets. They should have gone at least Animatrix. Animatrix kind of pulled that off a bit with that one really edgy Animatrix uh, short. Um, But... Yeah, there's also some weird innuendos thrown in there in which it's implied she, like, Lando has the hots for her. And then she, like, whips out this, like, laser cutter to cut a fence, and she's like, guys, look away. Like, I I have trouble getting it up when people are watching me. And it's, like, a really blatant, like, phallic innuendo with this female robot, which I guess is empowering to women, because... I guess all women have penis envy and penis like the idea of having a penis is the most empowering thing to a woman, I guess it's so dumb. This like liberal agenda is really being pushed to the nth degree to where it like makes no sense. I'm sure it's insulting to like a lot of liberals out there, a lot of um, Republicans as it were. Um, it's hard not to get political with Star Wars nowadays because they just force the politics right in there. It's actually kind of disgusting. It's so pandering too. I, if I was a liberal, I'd be offended at how much this movie's trying to pander. Um, yeah, just like honestly, I think that's. I think I covered it really. I think I said all all I needed to say. I definitely said more than I said in my IMDb review. <laughs> but holy moly, what a mess of a film! Like what a pointless film through and through that's executed poorly, and like doesn't even capture the the spirit of the original. Like, that's the whole point of making a throwback film, is to capture the spirit of the original, and they couldn't do that. And they they botched the production. Honestly, like, if they had to scrap the whole movie, just, it's not a movie worth making then, is it? But apparently they they invested too much money in it. They had to release it. And I think that's going to kill the Star Wars franchise. Anyways, I think that's all I have to say about Solo. A, a so lame a Star Snores boring for now. But I'm sure there's more to be said. And I just haven't. I, I've only scratched the surface. Anyways, stay salty, bros. Peace out. Peace off, rather. <laughs> And enjoy a life filled with misery with Kathleen Kennedy directing more Star Wars movies. Fuck Star Wars. Feminine Nazi.